Welcome back to the next episode of uh, Bishman Rook Defender Rescue, where we take Project Blackwater and break it down to the chassis so that we can start to do the final disassembly chassis refurbishment, pull the motor, and start to prep for the buildup. Uh, we did some really fun time-lapse video of this project showing us uh, kind of taking things apart and speeding it up. From start to finish, uh, even though we had done a few things ahead of time, it was probably a little over three hours with about five guys. Uh, we like to do it as a team this way uh, because then we can all kind of lend a hand where we need to, but then also it allows each one of the individual disciplines at the workshop to get an eye and hands on the donor project before we begin restoration. Uh, this one uh, came up with some pretty interesting stuff along the way and was kind of assembled using uh, quite a lot of different uh, fasteners. So you'll see that as we go along through the process and also we'll highlight some of the important things to look for in a donor vehicle. So hopefully you'll enjoy and have as much fun as we did. Well, we're finding a lot of uh, homebrew kind of ideas to fix a lot of this stuff. They use like uh, kind of drywall anchors for the front guards here. Then we're finding uh, Phillips screws for the fender, which are supposed to be Whitworth bolts. So all sorts of stuff is kind of going down with this. We also found some security torques uh, holding the hinges for the door on. Um, so we had to pop the pins out of those so we can get them off, but we're making do. And we're relatively new to the YouTube thing, but I think this is the point where we're supposed to say like, subscribe, and most of this is just so you don't miss any episodes and you can follow along with the process. We're trying to be helpful to show you what happens behind the scenes of these major restorations so that as you think about either building one yourself, doing a restoration, or having us build one for you, that you'll get to see the work that goes into it and also the guys get to introduce to them and the folks that are working on it both in our Minneapolis shop and our Salisbury, England uh, workshop making our way through and uh, just a little bit of a note on the organizational method that we use here is all the big parts that come off we tag it whether or not we're gonna reuse it or replace it or fix it uh, just so we know it goes to the truck so when it's sitting around the shop we're not staring and wondering what it is just like that and the next best thing for restoration is a sandwich bag where we take and we all the bolts, nuts, small pieces, uh, even if they're going to be replaced, we keep them all in bins with the restoration project as we go through it. So uh, worst case scenario, if something breaks, we lose something, we can put it in there for a uh, temporary placement and then come back uh, with a replacement bolt if necessary. Or a lot of times what we try to do is uh, refurbish uh, a lot of the items. If they're in good shape and, and just need a little bit of love and clean it up, we do that. So label everything with a Sharpie. And then that way we know we have all the parts or at least we know what we need to order up. That's, that's our hood release cable there. <laughs> Super cool. Custom. <laughs> One of the things that we recommend people do when doing an assembly for the first time is just take video notes and lots of photos to document the process. We even do it ourselves. So this part goes behind the fuel filter, down on the lower inner fender well, into the top of the fender. They're not all the same, so sometimes we have to do a little bit of video documentation. It's a good practice to do at home as well, if you're doing a restoration, because you're never gonna remember what the hell that thing was for later on. Exactly. And then now, we label it. And as you disassemble a Defender, you start to see 25 plus years of interesting fixes along the way. Some good, some bad, some really just unsafe. Pulling the doors off and we were kind of looking at the seat belts and whatnot. And then we found that the uh, seat belt bracket is not exactly, you know, up to safety code there. That would definitely come apart in the event of a hor horrible accident. So probably get that done right. <laughs> set of duct tape. 
One of the things that's really critical about doing defender restoration is having a team with all the experience to know the proper way to disassemble or reassemble something, but then also to lend a hand to make sure that you're not uh, throwing away or breaking parts that might uh, later on be necessary for the projects to be rebuilt. So one of the things about doing a full disassembly on a defender is that you start to see all the areas of concern. So normally just like a little tiny piece on the bulkhead there is not gonna be a problem because we could weld that up but we'll go down and start to discover that area needs to be replaced solid underneath here again this whole section they sell replacement panels but then you're talking about hours if you're on your own just kind of in your garage you don't care about the deadline it's generally fine but when you're kind of building something and you want to be factory new you start to look at these things to say yep this floor pan has been kind of patched in there. And not well. So, looks like we're due for a bulkhead on this one, which is fine. We kind of had that idea that we would need to do it. And we have a galve uh, bulkhead all ordered up, but just means that uh, we'll have to replace that. Airplanes. It's not always easy to do these videos. So we're taking a look at this side of the bulkhead and it's got the corner issues, which end up happening when the rain seals go bad and the seals up here go bad. Water gets trapped up in behind here. It starts to rust from the inside out. So if you're ever looking at a Defender and it's kind of bubbled up here, know that it's much more than a, a grinder job is that you're likely gonna need to do some welding. Come on down this pillar and exterior looks good but this bulkhead has been poorly patched looks like they just bolted in a, a piece of uh, aluminum there uh, on the inside it's fine and if this was just a farm truck that you're running around uh, kind of carrying stuff it's gonna be totally okay but uh, for us we're gonna need to replace this with a brand new bulkhead uh, which gives us time to paint it and, and kind of get it back to factory fresh So what would you tell people about the sirens here in Minnesota? Every uh, well, first Wednesday of every month, because we get tornadoes. So we get to hear this amazing sound for like a half hour. same so easy diagnosis yeah it's it's either it's either the red or the black wire or sometimes the green or blue or white yeah just whatever color is there if you're in the minneapolis area joe's lawn and snow 612-669-2589 they're our neighbors they're great they help us out all the time moving cars in and out we get in their way all the time and they're super patient Thought this would be a really good time to take a little pause and do a dramatic, heroic Defender Rescue montage interlude.
B pillar issues where we've got some cracking, we've got some rust. The other side is a little bit gutted. I think even the back side of this, start to see some holes. It's pretty typical of an unrestored Defender. Uh, C pillar there. The good news is we can get all new channels, both the B and C. Um, and as long as it comes apart, when we do the restoration and we do the chassis refurb, we'll take the whole tub off so we can get full access to that, strip that all the way down. Besides the little bit we knew was coming, the rest of it's starting. Yeah, big problem is that this thing rusts all the way down, creates a hole, and then that's what goofs that up, but it's actually not too bad. And in terms of our archaeology, this truck was white at some point in time. Uh, my favorite custom feature on this truck is these homemade repair panels for the bottom of the, the seat box <laughs> bins here. Get some really Dino nice... Yeah, a uh, hot glue gun to seal it and uh, just some hand bent diamond plate. Fixes it right up. It's a uh, European Happy Meal toys, I think. Okay. Uh, we get asked a lot about schedules and we try to stick to Sometimes when you're disassembling or doing a restoration on the Defender, not all things go as planned. Win. Sometimes it's a little accident, sometimes it's bigger than that. How many different bolts we got in here? Too many? <laughs> I think they're all wrong bolts, so that's the thing. They all came out of places they shouldn't have been. So in a couple hours, we can strip the entire Defender down to kind of the manageable pieces. It still needs some work to do. The tub still needs to come off. But you can see a lot of tiny tiny little parts brackets screws and being it's a 25 plus year old vehicle there's gonna be some weird stuff that goes on with it we're gonna pull back forward back her into the shop get ready for some more repairs so this truck looks like it's been taken apart what's the deal yeah it can still run it's just body stuff so. basically a tractor <laughs> I think this uh, becomes a pretty good stopping point for this uh, this video. Um, it took us a few hours to, to completely disassemble, or, or mostly disassemble, uh, Defender 110 and get it back in the workshop where we'll continue to the work. Eventually the motor will come out, the bulkhead will come off, the uh, tub will come off, and we'll start with the chassis restoration. It's uh, not a complicated process, it's just tedious and staying organized and making sure that you're not losing uh, critical parts is an important part of the process. Hopefully it was as enjoyable as it was uh, for you guys to see as it was for us to convert this from a perfectly good Defender into uh, a heap of parts on the ground. So stay tuned for the next episode as we continue the journey.